And now, coming at you from the Five Star Physique Studio in Knoxville, Tennessee, this is The Drop Set with your host, Darren Starr. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 186 of The Drop Set. I am here with one of your brand new, newest IFBB pros. This is Paige Sabedra. How do you doing, Paige? I'm doing fantastic, Darren. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, so congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, so you turned pro at the USA's, mm -hmm. which was, was that this month, uh, earlier this month? July 31st was the show day. Man, has it been a month already? Oh, I knew like, well, it was the last day of the month and then went, went right into August. So I was like, yeah. well, there goes uh, the summer. <laughs> How, uh, how's your first month as a pro been? Um, well, it's still settling in to be honest, but you know, overall it's been really nice. I think I'll say this right now, the, the positive support and feedback I've been getting is just meant the world to me. That's probably the best part, just the, the people reaching out. So it does feel good in that aspect. Yeah. Well, you do a good job. I mean, you are one of the most positive and encouraging people I see on social media. You're like championing other people all the time. So when, when somebody like you gets their due, it, it's pretty cool. I think that's a, a thing. I mean, I feel like I'm such a cheerleader sometimes that like when I get rewarded, I, it takes me a little longer to be like, Oh, like I have a pretty big title now. And I, I don't think I'm anything special or anything, but I'm like, wow, like I know I worked hard, but then you get it and you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, now, now I got this thing. What do I do with it? Oh, pff, well, yeah. And it's just like a card, right? It's yeah. A yeah. Card. <laughs> yeah. I thought, did they actually have the physical card for you there, like on stage? Yeah, they give you like, it's like a flimsy little card thing that I probably need to go get laminated. But to get the actual pro card that you have to pay for yearly, you have to go through the website and all that. And since I don't plan on competing for a little while, I'm not really going to go with that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Is the real one like, is it wallet sized? You know, yeah. it is. Okay. So, cause this is my big thing about like the COVID vaccine card. It's like too big for your fucking wallet. Like I agree. I just leave it in the car and just like, well, I'm like, if I, if I bust my ass for a pro card, it better fit in my wallet or give me a digital version that I can just like barcode scan off my phone or something like that. That's what I did with the NPC card. It just was a picture on my phone. I'd be like, all right. Man. That's the way to do it. That's smart. I like, you're not going to lose it that way. Yeah. I'm not printing it out. Who yeah. has printers? <laughs> <laughs> so you, um, you took at USA's, you took first in your class. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't a huge class. I think there were what, like eight in there or something like that, yep, eight but girls. it was a it was a good looking class. Um, and uh, it was what class figure B, C? C, yeah, I'm five, a little over five, three. Okay, all right, cool. Um, and uh, I mean, talk, talk us through, um, okay, so you heard this on a couple episodes ago where I had no idea where USA's were this year because it's always in Vegas and then this it was in Arizona somewhere, right? Yeah, it was like right outside of Phoenix. Well. Maybe I should say more in Phoenix, but not in like the big city area. Okay. The, the burbs of Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, cool. So talk us through show day a little bit because you had the better part of a week down there to get acclimated, um, staying with your coach. And uh, then you had a little bit of a commute to get to the venue. What was it like? Take us through like the 24 hours leading up to show day. Okay, well, uh, I I'm going to give a quick little shout out to my awesome coach, Cami Leal. I've been with her for a whole entire off season and prep, so about two years. And um, she lives in the Phoenix area. So we had decided um, after a show that we did in April and didn't really place where we wanted to, she right away was like, well, you are qualified for nationals and we can uh, aim for USA's and at the time it was supposed to be in Vegas so she was like you can come out and we'll we'll drive you up her and her boyfriend and I was like yeah that sounds like a, a great plan you know and then we can kind of reverse for a month and then slide back into a prep and just keep working on conditioning so yeah it w ended up changing the venue to Phoenix which obviously worked out better for us because yeah. she's in <laughs> Phoenix so I was like well that's awesome and um we still had the plan that I would stay there. So, you know, booked my flight, went there a week early. Um, I work from home. 
so it was nice to have a couple of days that I could still work at her place while she was working because she's got many clients that she works on during the week. Um, she had her eyes on me. She cooked my food. She took care of me in the best way possible. I've I pretty much had it set up for success, thanks to her. Man, I'm barely going to cook my own food, much less anybody <laughs> else's. I mean, she didn't have to. I mean, honestly, she didn't make all my food, but, you know, once she once I figured out how to use her air fryer, because I actually don't have one of those. <laughs> oh, are you getting one now? Is it on the list? It's going to be on the list, that's for sure. I'll find yeah. somebody. I'll find a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Pro card, where's my air fryer, please? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, come on. You've you, you got to do some kind of like a paid partnership or something with somebody now. You've, you've got clout. you got to spend it. I agree. <laughs> yeah, use but, that. Uh, yeah, we were set up there for a good week. And um, yeah, we, we just, it was a day-by-day -day thing. She really didn't want me doing anything. She literally was like, I want you to just sit here and put your feet up. That's the priority. I want to work with conditioning and mostly in the legs. Mm -hmm. And um, we went to the gym a couple times. She drove me out because um, honestly, she does not really leave her house except for the gym. <laughs> I can relate. And, uh, and then if we needed groceries, uh, her boyfriend would Instacart anything that we needed. And um, so, yeah, she so she lived about mm, I'd say about thirty minutes from the venue. So uh, I would say show day we drove out. Obviously, we had to go for like tanning and stuff the day before and check in. Um, I don't know if you have any questions with check-in. It was pretty much... Did, did, you, did you stay there after check-in or did you go back to her place? I went back to her place because okay. it was only a 30-minute drive. And uh, check-ins was like, they just did every division. So it was just all of the figure girls were all at once for check-in, which I don't know. It was like, you know how it is. It was like the first, you're a kid at the first day of class. And <laughs> did you get any kind of account as to uh, like how many people were in the show total? Uh, total, oof. well, there, to be honest, like, I'm not really sure total because, uh, they split it up into two days. So bikini, yeah. bo men's bodybuilding, men's, um, classic and wellness. They had that all on Friday where figure and physique and men's physique was just Saturday. And then everybody came back at finals. So I'll be honest, I didn't see the other classes. Okay. And so you, you didn't have to do things on two days. Like for you, Saturday was show day and that was it. Yeah, it was great. Cool. <laughs> I felt cool. bad for the other people. Yeah. I mean, so finals for everybody was on Saturday. Yes. So, so some of these poor saps had to do pre-judging on Friday and then wait, wait, wait and do finals on Saturday. I'm just going to go on the record right now and say that is horrific logistical planning. And whoever decided that was a good idea should be fired. That's just stupid shit because really, I mean, it's awful for the competitors that have to do that. That's terrible. I, agree. I feel bad for the all the bikini girls and wellness girls that probably had to do hair and makeup uh for both those days and maybe even like that's so expensive. And can we just talk about how people are going to be smelling on Saturday night? I mean, <laughs> if you have to do your prejudging on Friday morning, you, I mean, that's, you know, if I go eight hours without a shower, it gets a little questionable. You start talking about 48 hours. No, thank No, no. Give me a break. Good Lord. Yeah, for real. And, there, and you know how bikini, uh, those other classes, they're a lot bigger than figure. Cause yeah. to be honest, like when I left check-ins, I text a few of my friends and I was like, I'll be honest. I don't, I'm not seeing a lot of figure girls here. I mean, your class had eight, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I would say that a lot of, I think the biggest class might've been like a, like the short girls. Of course. Yeah. And there, there have been at, at USA's or nationals in the past, you know, it wasn't too many years ago and certainly with wellness and physique getting added and getting more popular. I mean, it, it's, there's, it's kind of cannibalizing figure a little bit in a couple of different directions, but you used to have a figure class with 30 women in it um, at these shows. And yeah. so uh, I, it, it was a little bit of a bummer to see that, but still like the quality was still there. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I kind of have at the same time, when you've got a class of 30 women, I think what you're asking the judges to do is really hard because there are some gems that are going to get overlooked in there just because your eyes can only focus on so much stuff at once. Absolutely. And, and I'll say this too, um, leading up to the show, I really didn't see too many girls talking about USAs, which is crazy to me because USAs is such a prestigious show and everything. 
everybody was, everyone's talking about North Americans and even before USA's, I was like, I feel like USA's might not be that big. It seems like everybody would rather do North Americans. And I don't know if it's because it's on the East coast or what. Well, and that's in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally like 30 minutes from me. <laughs> so why USA's and not North Americans for you? Um, Just timing? Well, because of coach. Yeah. Okay. Coach kind of talked me into it, and I, I liked her game plan at the time. This was back in April. We decided it, so we went mm-hmm. through it. So let, let, let's go back a little bit here. So that, that previous show that you did, that was, that was in April-ish, something like that? Okay, so yeah. let's go back way before then. You okay. hired Cammie as a coach around when? Uh, literally as soon as I stepped off stage, uh, July 2019. July 2019. And so that was the show, if I remember correctly, where you were working with a coach and you parted ways with that coach a few weeks out and you kind of coached yourself into the into it. And you took first, right? If I remember correctly. I won my class. Yeah. Check me out remembering stuff here. I didn't even have to look that hey, up. Well, you, I remember you, you called into the podcast and I remember I was really kind of following things closely there at that time. So, mm-hmm. man, that, that was two years ago from a guy who doesn't remember what his macros were yesterday. So I just want my props for that. That's pretty good. Um, okay. So 2019 you hired her and the plan initially was what? North Americans for 2020. Okay. How'd that go? (laughs) Well, uh, yeah, since I won my class, I really wanted to do nationals. And of course, being that it's 30 minutes from me, I really wanted to do North Americans and with COVID. Yeah. We decided to shut it down and I was totally okay with that because at the time, um, I just felt that, You know, I was pretty fluffy, to be honest, and I was having a lot of fun in the gym. And honestly, I was like, well, I don't want to put all this money into a show and then it get canceled or pushed back. And like I said, I'm having fun training and it doesn't hurt to grow. So I was totally okay with shutting it down. So you pulled the plug on North Americans before prep actually started for it? Yep. Literally like the week before she was like, let me know by next week and we'll, you know, we, we won't start prep. And then I, yeah, the next check-in, I was like, yeah, we're not doing this. And was it really kind of like, I don't even know if this show's going to happen. Why bother making an attempt? Well, yeah. And the gyms were shutting, shutting down here in Pennsylvania. And I just was like, I'm not doing a prep when I'm this fluffy and I need to like really cut weight. I just didn't trust it. I really didn't. Okay. So then continue growing and uh, like you maxed out on that phase at around what scale wise? Um, You mean my max weight? Yeah. 161. 161. And you stepped on stage at USA's uh, at what? Uh, 116. (laughs) 116. Okay. So for everybody listening out there, just think about that. Think about that. At 116, this is this is the, the easiest, dumbest question you'll get. At 116, did you feel small? Oh, yeah. I haven't been... I, when I saw that number, I was like, wow, I haven't seen that since high school. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing. You know, I see this with um, so many people that I work with. They're afraid to let that number get low on a cut. They're like, I don't want to be that small. And what I have to tell people is, I don't fucking care what the scale says. Like you're still holding body fat. Like you're, you're not lean enough to do it. It doesn't matter what the scale says. So you going from 161. Did you have a number in mind? Like I'm probably going to step on stage around this, even if it was just in your head. Did you have some number in mind? No, but I will say this right now, both the 2019 show and the April show, I hit 127, 129 range. So okay. if that tells you where I was kind of stuck at and literally needed to lose more, that's, mm-hmm. That's where we're getting at the gas. Yeah. Okay. So what, 127, 129, something like that. I'm, I'm taking some notes here because I'm going to refer back to these. Um, now, so what that tells me is that at that show, clearly, if we want to just go by the definition here, you were about 12, 13 pounds away from pro conditioning. And, and you stepped on stage at that weight. So that just kind of tells you like, there's a gap there. And you kind of had to bust a little ass to make that happen to go from like, okay, I am stage lean. Here it is. Now I'm going to drop 13 more pounds. Um, Did you think that was uh, insane or (laughs) I mean, necessary for sure, but Mm -hmm. did it seem a little nuts? In a way it did because I I knew that the work needed to be done. My, my feedback was always conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I knew that we, I knew that something like we had to dig a little deeper. Yeah. So let's talk about that show in April. Um, you're on stage like 120, mid, mid high 120s. Um, 
how do you feel your prep for that show went? Do you feel like you had enough time? Do you feel like um, if, if you had more time, it would have gone better? Or do, or do you just think like, well, this is where it was this time and that's okay? Well, so for the first show, um, that wasn't even my first choice of a show. Honestly, we started uh, prep Halloween weekend. And so that was mm. October 2020, correct? Yeah. And then I wanted to do the Arnold Amateur. That okay. was my original go-to. And obviously the Arnold got postponed and there was no date to come. So I was like, all right, Cammy, like here's the next show like a month like a month after I said, let's just, it, you know, all it's going to do is give me an extra month. So, um, and I always do like 20 week preps and always assume that there'll be more. So mm -hmm. that was even longer. Um, and like I said, I was at like 161 uh, when we started prep. So I knew that there's going to be a lot of work that, I, and I was definitely ready for it. And so, yeah, when we did the clash in April, you know, I, you know, thought, you know, that was a normal length of prep for me. So to me, I, I thought it was enough time, but I just, it's just always conditioning. And I just didn't know what that level was going to end up being or how it would feel. So to me, that's all I knew was that feeling at the clash. And when I was there, you know, the girl that got second place was very conditioned, but no shape. And then the girl that got first what had shape, but not really great conditioning. So that's where I was a little confused. I really wasn't happy with that show, but yeah. It was a situation where with, with the right judging panel, any one of you could have been first, just depending on preference. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and I'll say this right now too, uh, at the April show, you know, three, three of those judges were at USA's also. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> You're like, remember me? Assholes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had Tyler Mannion, his girlfriend, Alita, and then Sandy. Me. Okay, cool, cool. You know, one thing, and I, I wonder, having gone through this, if you have a similar perspective, I'm always worried about when I take a client and get him into an off season and we're putting on weight and it's productive, but I know it's like, man, we're going to have some pounds to lose. I feel like this is like trying to hit like a house with a bazooka from three miles away. It's like, okay, uh, let's just aim for this and see what happens. We might hit it. We might miss by 500 feet. It's like, eh, I don't know. Versus if you stay a little bit leaner, um, you miss out on some potential there, but then you feel like you've got a little bit more of a laser focused idea on how hard you need to push and what some of your markers are along the way that you need to hit in order to get there. Um, do you think having done that, gotten up to 161, do you think that'll change your approach for an next growth phase or you're like, whatever, it was good. <laughs> Yeah, this, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've always been the girl that's like, I, I'm very comfortable with my body and I enjoy all the stages of this process. So I'm, I don't really think I have major body dysmorphia like you see a lot of the times in this sport, but um, I do feel like that that thickness that I put on was for a purpose. Yeah. So, and I think that the time that that happened was, it was good. Because now that I'm a pro and I, I think I've finally hit a good spot, um, like my coach is like, there's probably no reason that you need to go over 140. That's probably like um, probably our most recent uh, decision with the current weight that we'll get up to, which I'm still reversing. So we're, we're not there yet. But um, yeah, I do feel that there, there's a certain time. There's, it's a process. So yes, I think mm -hmm. it does help to be thicker when you're starting out and you really need to establish more muscle, but it does depend on the genetics and where you're at in your journey too. I feel, you know, like I'm, I don't know, cause you're the coach. So I don't know, I guess it yeah. would depend on the client and like where they see themselves and what they want to do if it's necessary to put on more weight. I felt it beneficial because I wanted to go to the gym and lift heavy and make the appropriate adjustments and then shred the fat off later. Well, and also, I mean, a lot of it does depend on genetics too. And I was, you know, I always hate saying this, but it's so true. It's like, you know, nobody's going to get to be an IFBB pro unless you have good genetics. Like if you have shit genetics, I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. You know, there's no amount of hard work that can make up for that. Um, and like you got up to 161, but you know, you're nice and transparent. You're always, you know, like, here's where I am right now. And the thing is at 161, you still had shape. 
And a lot of people, if they bulk up to that kind of a size, they're just going to kind of look square or worse yet, maybe roundish and just not really have any shape. You're not going to see any taper. You still had a waist, you know, shoulders were there. Um, I mean, it's like, okay, yeah. If you start to lose your shape, I think it becomes more of a problem. I agree. And like, I mean, we've talked about this before too. I, I'm very consistent with wearing a waist trainer. I actually have mine on right now. So I like that, <laughs> that keep, kept my, my shape a little bit um and then yeah and then it, it is genetics i do have a wide back and then a you know i'm half or partially hispanic so i definitely have like the shape to the bottom too mm -hmm. but yeah i just genetically have a very wide back yeah that's a it's a good thing it's a good thing um now Oh, where was I going with that? You know, some people also, it has to do with their comfort level. Um, cause some people like if you were 161, now you take somebody else around your frame size, you put them up at 161 and they're going to be like, I'm going to put a bullet in my brain. I feel so uncomfortable right now. This is awful. I'm not going to leave the house and you know, I'm going to start shopping online for like weight loss pills and all this crap. And it's like, okay, well, you know, you started this at, at 130. Where do you want to be? Oh, 135. I'm like, you're not going to get anywhere, <laughs> especially if you've, if you've got a lot of frame to fill out, you got some muscle to build, you got to get uncomfortable with it. It doesn't mean you have to turn obese, but you're probably going to have to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think if I could give some tips on that, um, I trust it. my coach and I always did. So it was like, I, I never was worried about what, how she wanted to feed me. She kept me healthy. Um, and like, I got so much variety on my meal plan that, you know, the weight, I just was comfortable because I trusted her. Um, I also would buy clothes that would fit because <laughs> I guess people forget that, you know, when your body changes, like you got to be your it, size kind of needs to change too. Yeah. So I, yeah, like, and I would wear looser clothing or whatever, like, like I wouldn't let that bother me. And like, as a female too, I've noticed that men prefer a little bit more curves. So mm -hmm. Um, obviously like that's something I think girls forget. It's like, oh yeah, abs are cool. But like if you, for the opposite sex, men are just naturally attracted to the curves, mm -hmm. just how it goes. So there was that too. Um, but yeah, I mean, bulking, it can be really tough for a lot of females, especially. Did you find, I mean, I always tell this to people as well. Like when you cut the changes on a week to week or day-to-day -day basis are a lot more evident. Um, when you're in a growth phase, you can go weeks at a time and be like, what the fuck is happening? Like mm -hmm. I'm performing well, I get good pumps, but I can't tell it anything's different. Did, were you kind of in a space like that sometimes? Um, yeah, it was very stagnant. It, it would just like depend. Um, and plus, you know, doing most of my bulk during a lockdown with COVID, you know, just being stuck inside where you didn't have the gym would make it mentally, you know, frustrating sometimes, but you would just have to think like, I'm not alone. Like other people are stuck to, and some people like I, and I still stuck to my meal plan. I never cheated. So it was one of those things too, where like, I can see where people might've went off the rails and then maybe got even more down on themselves. Yeah. There was a lot of that as a coach. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. There was, there was plenty of that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not perfect, but I really didn't cheat on my meal plan. So, so yeah. quick, quick detour on that subject. Um, describe your relationship with or your approach to food just generally like from a mental perspective because a lot of people you know uh, there was something i saw today like and i kind of agree with this in some ways like you shouldn't even consider doing a show if you can't follow your plan i'm like well yeah but i think there's room for exceptions on that for people that are just starting out like you have to kind of learn that level of adherence and that doesn't mean that you can't get ready for a show it does mean you have to adjust your expectations a little bit um but when you're looking to compete at a high level if you're getting ready for a national level show mm -hmm. it's 100 percent every day or why bother doing it so what, what's your approach to that and how do you stay focused and how do you not give a shit about all the noise and distractions that kind of get foisted upon you from all these other directions I'll say it's definitely not an easy road. I, I definitely sympathize for people that have uh, food, bad food habits, because I've been there. You know, I, when we were talking about that past coach that I had, I mean, I just, I think he was used to treating people like a robot, like we would just always follow plan. But, you know, um, I would say, I can only say for most of us females that I've seen, you know, you can't just assume like we don't have some sort of relationship with food. 
and that um, like if I got a cheat meal, he would just say, go have a cheat meal. Well, to me, I'm like, I would just go pig out and binge and eat all kinds of things because to me, cheat meal was like everything. And I would just try to stuff my face and it wasn't good. Like that is just not good. And it's, it's and, disordered eating. Yeah. And his communication with me just, it, he just, he wanted a robot. I'm not a robot. And that's why like I look back and I don't want to point the finger completely, but he just was not the coach for me. And now I will tell I you have, as a coach, we love robots. We really do. <laughs> sure. It makes it hella easy, especially him. He was very young too. So I'm sure there was a lot of, knowledge and stuff not really there and um but yeah going with cammy someone who like i knew was gonna keep me fed and kind of happy and she does a great job communicating it just worked out better um but i'll say like when she gives me a cheat meal now it's like you can have this 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 or this you know steak and potatoes sushi burger and fry like it's very like and i prefer that like it was almost like you're giving me options and there's some flexibility, but at the same time, and, and they're all great options too. So it was mm -hmm. kind of just more structured, yeah. um, but flexible. Yeah. Yeah. And so you do follow a meal plan. You don't follow a macro-based diet. No, I'm not, I'm a, I'm not good with numbers. I'll say <laughs> that right now. I'm terrible. I hate math, anything of the sort. My numbers just go over my head. If you were good with numbers, do you feel you'd still do better on a meal plan? I prefer meal plan, especially for competing. It's just easier to do the routine and structure for me. It's just, I don't know. I find it, it's just what I'm used to also. I don't think there's anything wrong with macros, but I'm someone that takes a lot of uh, a work, the work out of grocery shopping and meal prepping ahead. Yeah. I, I told my coach when I started working with her, I'm like, heads up, I will not follow a meal plan. Like I, I will, but I need you to tell me what my macros are and I will create the meal plan and I'll let you know what I'm doing. So it's still like, it's the same thing every day un until I get sick of something that I want to change it. So I, I still have that same regularity in shopping and meal prep. You know, I still cook up four pounds of ground Turkey every five days, five days. I still cook up four pounds of dry Jasmine rice every three days. So, you know, it's like, it, it's the same thing, but it's like, I, I can't have somebody else telling me what to do. It's not an ego thing. It's just like, it's gotta be stuff that appeals to me or pff, my adherence is gonna take a shit and go out the window. I understand. I know many with the macros and there's people that don't. And you know, it's, we're not all gonna have the same plan. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did the show in April. Um, mm -hmm. The plan then, uh, was the plan then immediately like, okay, USA's. Yep. That was pretty Literally, much it from the get go. I stepped off stage. Yeah, okay. we sat down and we had a talk because, you know, she knew that I was a little upset. Um, the pre-judging went so fast. I was so stressed out because they, well, there just, there just weren't a lot of competitors and the show went faster than I thought. And I was like almost late. So I literally was just, it was just not a good time for me. And I just, I'm not going to blame anybody, but that's just how it went. So, yeah. you know, I went straight to her and we just game planned right away let, let me also just interrupt you really quick so that was what show for you third fourth fifth sixth that was my sixth show so usa's was my seventh okay so just for everybody out there listening the experience that you had that was at your sixth show you're not a rookie and yet shit can still go south it can get screwy for any number of reasons basically what i always tell people is go into a show expecting something shitty to happen and if it doesn't great but just be prepared for it and be prepared to roll with the punches as best you can mm -hmm. um and whatever happens try not to let it stress you out because if it does they will see that on stage it will show in your body mm -hmm. yeah. it will um so okay april and then was the plan like okay, immediately we're going to continue cutting, or I think you mentioned a little bit of like a, a, like a deload for a handful of weeks first. Yeah, I took a week off the gym. Uh, she gave me like three days of flexibility of eating with whatever. And, um, you know, I took advantage of it. And I am definitely this somebody who will take advantage of rest days, even mm -hmm. a week, because she was just like, get your mind for, she's like, get your mind right for nationals because this is like serious. And I was just like, you got it. Yeah. Get so, your, get your mind ready for the fact that this is going to be a big fucking show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She literally like said that right away. She was like, go get whatever out of your system. Go enjoy some food because we are going, we're like, we're going hard. So I was yeah. like, got it. I was ready. So, you know, 
took my break, took my time, got mentally prepared, which, you know, I was ready. And um, yeah, like I said, it was just like a quick reverse and right back on plan, a little bit more carbs and, you know, calories. Um, cardio was just kind of like average because it, she does not really like bump it until the last month. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it just, it was just more time, more dialing in. And then at the end she pulled calories and it was, you know, the typical fish and asparagus for like two weeks. Yeah. See, that's where I didn't, yeah, that, that's where I'm out at that point. Nope. No, thanks. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I really didn't, but. <laughs> oh, oh God, no, no. Awful. Awful. Um, so would you say that that the prep for the USA's and prep for the clash, I mean, different lengths of time, but there wasn't any like drastic changes between the two. It's just, you started prep for USA's at a much lighter place. Um, but followed pretty much a, a pretty similar protocol as far as, you know, the way that calories work, the way that cardio worked. Yeah, I would say that um, as much as I keep saying that the clash was kind of disappointing at the same time, it was meant to happen. Um, this was obviously my first show with Cami, and she was able to take notes. You know how it is. If, if it's a client doing a first show, like sometimes you're going to make a couple mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. and she was able to learn a lot. She learned what worked for me and what didn't. And then, um, yeah, I, I think that what she learned from that show really helped uh, with USAs and then obviously learning to be early and on time and things are different now, just things were quick because it, it did help me out because I did hear about other people at USAs that like missed their class and stuff. <laughs> I hate that. Oh God, that's the worst. That's the worst. Um, the worst story I ever heard was some, uh, a client of mine that was doing universe a couple years back mm -hmm. and for finals, she was actually held off the stage. The expediter wouldn't let her go on because the expediter was confused and didn't think it was the right class for her. And she's like, no, that's my class. Nope. Stay there. Hold on. She was like talking to somebody else at the same time. And so she got disqualified because, <laughs> because she wasn't there. And the judges never bothered to say like, Hey, we're missing somebody. Like at that point, you like got to stop the show. Be like, we're missing somebody. Are they there? Uh, but no, that didn't happen. So, um, like, she got her entry fee refunded, but you know, it was a cross country flight, uh, a week's worth of Airbnb. I mean, for for that. So, that that was some garbage. So stuff like that does happen. And the thing that I always tell people is, bodybuilding. They're they're pretty big productions, but they're they're run by people who do other things as their primary job. Like if you're a promoter, you run a show, et cetera. That's one of the things that you do. Um, there isn't anybody out there that can do that full time. And that's the only thing that they do. So that your attention's divided and it's always going to be kind of an amateur production just because of that. You know, it's a, it's, it's like a big concert, like a, a giant rock concert where, where you've got all the roadies setting everything up, except nobody's doing this as their full-time job. So the expectations have to be adjusted a little bit. You just kind of have to roll with it and go with the flow a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the plan now? So you're a pro, you get to start looking at shows, picking shows. Um, are you thinking like 2022? Or are you thinking further ahead than that? Yeah. So um, I already knew um, going into USA's like my goal was top five. That's, that's what I wanted. This was my first national show. I wanted top five. So to win. You did it. First, what? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> to uh the win first was a little bit you know kind of jaw dropping draw dropping i guess you could say because yeah. that's kind of why i was so stunned because to just be wanting top five and then get first was just amazing like to be honest like i kept saying like i wanted this for the experience i really wanted to learn and then i was going to go right into an off season i do not care like i knew north americans was kind of in the back burner like well, if you're like top three, you could just jump in the North Americans. But mentally, I gave this show my all. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this another month. I'm kind of done at this point. <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah. that happens. Competitors, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that you need to know your body enough when it's time to shut it down. And um, so, yeah, no matter what, I knew I was going into off season. So mentally, I was already there. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, winning was awesome. You know, it took me a couple of days. I couldn't, couldn't sleep. I was so excited for winning. So that <laughs> was rough. I had to kind of recoup from all of that. Um, but yeah, I was just ready for off season and obviously being in Pittsburgh, we've got the Pittsburgh pro. And I would say that, um, I would say that May 2022 is a little too soon for me because I do want to make improvements. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to aim for 2023 Pittsburgh Pro. All right, cool. So May 2023. So now May ish, you know, these dates are always a little, little flexible. Um, what are the priorities for off season? Oh my goodness. Well, I definitely won the show from my back. Mm -hmm. That was pretty much the, the prize piece. Um, but when they were moving me around on stage, I knew it was always the front pose that would get me moved because uh, the other girls had a lot more shape to their quads. Um, and I, I was the most conditioned, but I need a little more shape to the teardrop a little bit to the higher quad. I just genetically guess I don't have it from the front. I have hamstrings, but the quads just need more development. And then I want to work on more, more shoulder, mm -hmm. more front and side for sure. But like I said, my back, um, is pretty good. The only feedback that they gave me, uh, well, I should say Sandy, she just told me a little bit more back depth okay so i just know that that just means getting my back a little meatier i guess because i meatier. have the width i need more meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and you know you don't want to sacrifice that so um the one thing that I've, I've noticed and i'm seeing this still now is like just the the cartoonish proportions are still getting rewarded like oh your delts are the size of your head they're completely out of proportion with everything else in your body you're first it's like, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, figures developing into kind of like an upper body wellness where it's like, we're rewarding all this disproportionate stuff. I kind of wish they would back off from that a little bit. Um, but nobody's listening to me, unfortunately. Well, it, from what I'm seeing in the pro league also, um, like I see girls that have crazy big delts where I'm just kind of like, you're like almost borderline physique. You just have high heels on. <laughs> um, and then the girl that I'm thinking of in my head, uh, she got told her feedback was more shoulders. I was like, you already have these crazy shoulders. What do you mean? They're telling you more. Like I, it just, <laughs> it, it almost feels like some of this feedback is just like, you know, it's like Mad Lib feedback where they just randomly type stuff in. Um, or it's, you know, what I call autopilot feedback where it's like work on conditioning your lower body, practice your posing. It's like, you can tell that to everybody and it will be appropriate 95% of the time. So that's, that's lazy judges feedback. <laughs> right. And I mean, the girl that won the overall at my show, um, when I compare myself to her, she just had more overall like density. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she was maybe older than me. Cause we know that, you know, older muscle maturity, is sometimes a thing. So yeah. to be honest, like, I just, I just need a little bit more size before the pro level. And I'm, I'm excited to grow. I love to train and I'm ready for it. Well, and you know, the, the disappointing thing sometimes, and I've, I've known people who have done this, I've seen it happen a lot. Um, you bust your ass and, you know, especially when somebody like works and works and works and works for a pro card, they do national shows four, five, six, seven times. They finally get it. And then they're so burnt out at that point, they never compete as a pro. Yeah. And I've seen that. And that's why I'm like very great grateful that I was able to win my first national show because I know tons of my friends who have done like five national shows and they're still working for it or they just got it and then here comes me like all right got it done sorry <laughs> there we go see you guys later well let, let's just take a second to just mention like how unusual that is also yes I do not want to like it, it's really hard for me to promote how awesome it is and I'm that's why I keep saying I'm grateful but it's that's not going to happen for every girl or anybody yeah yeah I mean it's I, I equate it a little bit to like survivor's guilt if you're in a plane crash and you're the only one who lives you kind of feel guilty about that I'm like fuck that you lived it's cool it sucks that everybody else didn't but I mean you got it and it sucks for the people that didn't but you know there, there's two components to this I think um and the first one I, th I think they're I don't know if they're equally important and this isn't to undersell your effort at all but it's like you've got to absolutely bust your ass and then you've got you've got to be at the right show as well and it's it's always about who else shows up um like I could show up you know I'm 11 weeks and three days out right now if I find the right show I could probably go up on stage today and take first because the only two other two other guys in my class are just older and fatter than me you know I mean that's just picking the right show dumb luck um but you can't count on dumb luck so you've got to bring it and leave everything on the table before you get there and so that's what you, you set yourself up for the best chance um and then th there's certainly a, a luck component to it but also it's like yeah Sometimes it's just like, you, you can be lucky, you can pick the right show, you can come in super conditioned, and the judges can be like, nah, her. 
we like her instead. Yeah. Like so, luck luck cuts both ways. Right, and for us girls too, sometimes it comes down to your your hair and suit color, you know. So there's even those kind of factors that come into play, and sometimes it's out of your control. And can we just talk about how unfair that is? Because guys don't have to worry about any of that shit. I know. Believe it's stupid. It's Especially stupid. for a bikini, because sometimes I'm like, they all look good. I don't understand. And, it, and then it does have to come down the hair and makeup, and it turns into a pageant. Yeah. And nobody in, in, in on the judging panel cares which guy is the sexiest up there. No. No. I, I, and I mean, I, first of all, I'm cool with that. But it, <laughs> it should work both ways like that as well. And I'm, I'm afraid it, it doesn't always work like that. Uh, um, so there's been a lot of talk lately. You may have heard about like, you know, anabolic diuretic protocols and stuff like this some crazy shit going on um so you have mentioned like yeah i I didn't see anything like that i didn't do anything like that so i'm just gonna ask like a very blanket like the the psychiatrist question here what do you think about that (laughs) well um i will say that the only diuretic that we had used for usa's was coach had me do a half a diazide, um, diazide, uh, the front, like before going to get the first coat of tan. Mm -hmm. Um, we relied heavily on like natural, like dandelion root and asparagus. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of hot baths with Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. And that was what really dried me out. And we also, she does the water load approach where we do like three gallons for three days. And then you just keep tapering off the water. So that was our approach, just to say what my experience is with my coach. And, you know, she she was always, she always keeps me safe. And plus I was there, she kept her eye on me. So we don't have any problems there. Now with, with the controversy and everything going on, um, I would say right away, like I've used Diazide before at other shows. So I was aware of what that is, but some of the stuff I've been seeing, I'm like, I don't know what that is. I would just say no, or at least try to research or Google or, I don't know. I'm very involved with podcasts. I'm like, I know somebody who could help me mm-hmm. if I had a question. Um, and my gym partner is coached by Shelby Starnes and she has not had a problem. She loves Shelby and does not plan to leave him. So, and I have not asked her what her protocol, cause she competed the week before me mm-hmm. and I just felt I would, I was just going to trust her and be like, okay, if, if you're happy with how things went at your show and whatever protocol he gave you, okay so yeah and you know the the one thing that i i hear a lot of people say is like well i'm a client of shelby's or i'm a client of shane's or whoever and i haven't seen a protocol like that i'm like that doesn't mean shit we're not saying that everybody gets them Mm -hmm. but some people clearly are and the stuff that i've seen in writing like nobody should get that that's like (laughs) that's that's absolutely insane and i have a problem with a protocol like that being written much less sent to anybody not saying that everybody gets it and i think there's been i've I've listened to a couple of podcasts as well where that's the implication like everybody gets this he's just some cookie cutter coach nobody's saying that i think people are saying that this is just an irresponsible thing to have written down in the first place like um and and like you said um the the responsibility cuts both ways like it's the responsibility of the coach to not write something like that it's the responsibility of the person to not take shit if you don't know what it is and to feel like you're empowered enough to say like yeah i'm not really comfortable with that or can you explain this and if you don't get an answer you know first of all don't take it and if you don't get an answer probably not a good coach that you're working with also let's just go there Well, you know how it is, especially with nationals, a lot of girls will do whatever it takes or anybody will do whatever it takes. And sometimes these coaches are like, all right, here you go. And I'm not saying that that's right. And like you just said, it goes both ways. And, um, you know, and and these high level coaches, like I consider Shelby a very high level coach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it it comes with the title. There's a reason why everybody wants to work with them. So, and you know, there's got to be some sort of recipe that i mean there has to be something yeah and i don't i don't think i mean i'm certainly not insinuating that you know this diuretic protocol oh well that's a secret that's how his women all come in shredded i'm like i've seen plenty of them look look great at four weeks out okay so the diuretic i don't think is the secret sauce there um there's more to it than that um i think what i have an issue with is that a coach is placed in a position of inherent and sometimes undeserved power and trust um, that needs to be 
called out and questioned and not like, Hey, what are you doing? But just like, you know, a client should feel comfortable asking a question and getting the answer that they're satisfied with. Um, but also, like you said, the whole, I'll do anything mentality, especially if you've been prepping for 20 weeks and then at 10 days out, you receive this protocol. I mean, it takes a lot of, you know, for lack of a better word, balls to say, no, I'm not doing that. I've done all this other stuff, but this is where I cross the line with 10 days left to go. So, um, for me, like I would have that conversation and, you know, I'm, I'm on record as saying I've actually never had a client use a prescription diuretic um, because I, I believe in them. I think they work, but I'm not in a position where I can watch my clients firsthand. And that's something where it's like, yeah, I'm not really comfortable putting myself at that level of liability. So, um, but uh, where was I going with that? Shit. Trusting inter- is what, what I would say to that. What's that? You just have to trust your coach or have good communication. And I think in the world today that a lot of people just suck at communicating. Yeah. And I think, I think the other thing is um, there have been stories of a lot of people who are just given these anabolic and diuretic protocols and they don't know what any of this stuff is, which tells me it's like, you're dealing with somebody that probably hasn't taken any of this stuff. Might not have any idea what it is, might not want to. (laughs) And it's like the thought of just like throwing a gear protocol at somebody without having a conversation about it beforehand. Um, or, you know, like I would have a conversation with somebody if I was in the business of, of telling people to take diuretics, I'd have that conversation at the start of prep. Like, Hey, do we want to finish this up with a diuretic or do you want to leave that out? Are you comfortable with that? I mean, it, like you said, it's all comes down to communication and there's a lot of poor communicators out there. Yeah. And I'm an over communicator. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. I, I, I like you people to some extent. Sometimes it delves into stories about work and this coworker that sits across in the next cubicle from you. I'm like, yeah, I don't need these three paragraphs in your check-in. I really don't. <laughs> this isn't helping me at all. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I can't imagine. <laughs> um, well, cool. So Pittsburgh, May-ish, 2023. Yeah. The Pittsburgh is usually almost always around the Cinco de Mayo week. Oh, so, right. and of course, that's kind of uh, after the, it's always after the Arnold, which I do know the Arnold will be back next year. Okay. I feel that um, like the Pittsburgh's probably the first big pro show and being that the Mannions are from Pittsburgh, they treat that one like their baby. So it's a pretty good show. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, what are your uh, non bodybuilding related plans? Any travel coming up or anything fun? I will be going to the Olympia. So I'm mm. um, not in the Olympia. I'm not that cool, but uh, <laughs> um, I'll be working at the expo and I'll be going to the shows. So I'm pretty working excited. at the expo. Where? What booth? It's at the, uh, the, the hotel that it's at. I mean, what are, are you working in a booth or? Oh yeah. I'll be working at the figure slim booth, but from figure what slim. I'm hearing, right. they don't have the floor plan out yet. So I don't know what booth number just yet. Okay, cool, cool. Um, anything else? Any any legit vacations or anything like that? Um, well, honestly, being that I've been in prep for like a whole year, I have yeah. a lot of friends I need to visit. So I wouldn't yeah. say any extravagant vacations, but I am planning to go and just like stay with a friend. I work from home now, so I can just take my laptop, maybe stay with them um, because I really didn't get to do much when I was in prep. And I've got a lot going on. I'm, I'm actually like doing a lot of like side businesses. Um, I'm starting to tan at shows. So like oh, cool. I will be at North Americans tanning uh, and being backstage to do touch ups and glazing. So I'll be at a few shows till now until the rest of the year. Um, I got in the dog sitting, which is like really fun and nice. weird. That's a good gig right there. It is, especially around where I live. There's a lot of you know, people with money that do not want to put their dogs in boarding places. I know. I saw it sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> hazard <laughs> derby. Well, I couldn't even tell until I turned around. I'm like, well, that could be either of their heads. I'm not sure that's a derby though. Yeah. That's why I was like, I can't tell which dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in the, behind me there, they look kind of similar size. Taz is, I tell you what, he's gotten really moody lately um, in his old age. Like he's somewhere maybe around 11 or so. He's a rescue. So we don't know. But man, he's getting cranky and moody. Um, it, it happened where we took a trip to Charleston. We took them down with us in the car and we stayed at an Airbnb right on the beach in Isle of Palms. It was cool. Um, I love and then we, had a, we had a six hour, six and a half hour car ride on the way back. And so uh, we got back and I'm like, all right, cool. Last hurrah, cheat meal. It's pizza night. Awesome. Let's go. And so the usual routine is Taz will get in the car with me and we'll go to the pizza place and they have a drive through window and we'll pick it up. 
And so I'm like, well, he's been in the car all day. So I'm just going to, you can stay here, buddy. I'm going to go get it. So I went and I came back with pizza and he realized that he didn't go to get a go with me. And that was like the start of him pouting for like a week straight. <laughs> I mean, he was not happy with me. I tell you, he, we gave him scraps of pizza crust. He would need it. I mean, he, wow, he was stubborn. pissed. <laughs> he was, and, and that's kind of started his moody phase now. So he's like cranky old man but dogs, what are you going to do? They're so cute though. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to follow you online, um, how can they find you? Where, they, where can they find your podcast? So I'm on Instagram at, at Paige Sabidra. And then I do have a link in my bio for my YouTube. But if you look up Paige Sabidra on YouTube, you'll find all my podcasts on there that are also on Spotify and iTunes. And then I also do... Um, I'm doing an off season vlog. All my prep vlogs are on there. So that's been a lot of fun for me. So yeah, I'm an open book. I'm very social. So everything's on there. I got to ask you how much work goes into one of those vlog episodes. It I looks just, like a lot. I'll tell you what, the new iPhone 12 is awesome for the camera. And I just sometimes just pull it out and you know, me and my friends will just pass it along when I'm working out for training clips or maybe that's I'm the other thing is you're, you're never working out alone. It seems like you've always got somebody there to film you. I got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have none. So I have nobody to film me. So therefore the only videos you're ever going to see of me are shitty angles from the floor, looking up at my crotch. And it's like, dude, nobody wants to see that. Stop it. So I, I need some friends. Apparently if you're in the Knoxville area and you're somebody that I can tolerate, um, reach out to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know everyone's, I know a lot of people, most bodybuilders are kind of, you know, introvert and I'm like the weird extrovert that like always have friends and I'll be honest, like, I don't mean to say this in a, like a cocky way or anything, but I'm literally having to schedule people to work out with me because everybody wants to work out with me. And I'm just like, there's only one of me and working out is my time. So <laughs> That's hilarious. You, st you should start charging a day rate or something. I should because I'm not a coach or anything, but it's just the fact that, you know, people see my training level and yeah, I, I think they, uh, you know, they just want to join in on the fun, I guess. That's hilarious. Be my training partner slash guest videographer for the day. Pretty much. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Any last uh, minute parting words or anything for us? Oh, no. I mean, again, thank you for having me on. This is a lot of fun. I, I love About time. Podcasting. I love like just talking to people. Like I think, I don't know. I think turning pro is obviously going to be a whole nother level. And I'm, you know, anybody, like anybody else, just learning as I go. Um, and I'm just really grateful and love competing, but I just think that I really want to set a good example for other competitors. I want to be that person that, you know, if girls have questions, you know, my, my DMS ever since I turned pro, I've been getting a lot more DMS, but you know, I, I like it and I just want everyone to know that I appreciate the support and it's just been wonderful and I can't wait to see what happens with my journey and I'm just happy to share and people, people like to watch, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we also appreciate your support of pretty much everybody in the industry. So we need more people like you. So if you figure out how to clone yourself or at least get your personality kind of spread out there a little bit more, I think that'd be a good thing. Positive page is what I keep hearing. So I like it. That's got a nice ring to it. Positive. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Well, awesome page. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, I'll let you get about your day, get back to work, be productive, make some cash, etc. <laughs> All right. We'll get you back on here again sometime soon. Talk about that prep when you're in prep for Pittsburgh and see how that's going. Oh yeah, definitely. It'll be fun. And then good luck with your shows too. Cause I'll be watching. Oh God. Pressure's on. Thank you. <laughs> see All right. you.